Well, hi everybody. Welcome back to Kelly Reviews. Uh, reviewing middle of the month li library book haul. So stay tuned. The Inland Sea. The Inland Sea by Madeline Watts. Astute and precise, almost savage in its eloquence about what it feels like to love, to be left, and to want more. I drift, out, I drift after her final year in college. A young writer begins working hard time as an emergency dispatcher. Ooh, I like that already. Operator in Sydney. Over the course of an eight-year shift, or excuse me, over the course of an eight-hour shift, she has dropped into hundreds of cr crises. Ooh, I like that. Sounds like a little bit of The Call. Remember The Call? But with Halle Berry in it? Yeah. Kind of reminded me of that so far. That's where my mind went. Hearing only the pieces of each. Colors report, at car accidents, and violent spouses. Uh, and home, homes on fire. Yeah. That sounds like it's going to be a good book. Ooh. I, you know, the best part about doing middle month library book haul, one of them is that i don't remember half the books that i put on hold at the library and then when the library shoots me a text message and saying hey guess what your books are available the ever after the ever after by amanda hawking from the world of the trail goodreads now the first book that i told you about which was the graceling well, actually, it's not the first book I told you about, but let's just check it out. Let, Graceling, right? Graceling. By, yep, yeah, the first one right here. Perfect. Perfect. Yep, this is the first book that I got. So, um, perfect. Not surprised. Okay. Well, it's in it's in my collection now that I'm gonna be reading. So I will follow you, Kristen. Follow you, follow you. I know I can't sing, <laughs> but at least I can have fun, can't I? All right, perfect. Now for the next book, and it's got four star rating, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a four star rating. The Widow Queen. I want to check that out and see if if the widow queen right yep the widow queen queen by liz yep yep she's a okay perfect it's a part of the uh, it's a part of a, a series and i got the first one always remember to get the first one if you haven't read anything of the series yet i learned that one the hard way too so yeah so it's also a four star rating and yeah it's got 512 pages perfect 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 historical fiction well you're gonna go back in time so that's what historical fiction really means um the ever after the ever after by what's what's their name amanda hawking right here they have oh you look see this is what i'm talking about it's the third book in in that. So oh, the uh, opt the opt the um t origins. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. The um t origins. I'm still gonna oh, really. You don't have it. Okay, bull. The Ever After. The Ever. Right. Amanda Hawking. Oh, 
Let's see about pulling you up quick. You got a lot of books, kiddo. Yeah. The Omti, though. The Omti. You got a lot of books. I think you're going to be another book that I, I. Another author I like reading from. Right here. The Lost City. Yeah, The Lost City, 384 pages. I'm going to follow you too if I, yeah, follow you. And now, um, The Lost City, uh, we're going to see if the the public library, Anigo, Wasa has it, and uh, then I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> this would be funny. I'm going to love looking at this. It's a graphic novel. Look, it's it's like a comic book. The twisted ones kind of reminds me of the twits. Remember, uh, I put a link up here or a link up here um, of, of that book haul of the twits. You're, I know you're gonna like it. it it'll make you, it'll make you laugh. It, I mean, it made me laugh plenty of times. So if you apparently if you don't laugh, you don't really have a sense of humor. And this is by Scott Cawthon. Friday nights at Freddy's. It's been a, a year since the horrific events at Freddy's, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and Charlie is just trying to move on, even with the excitement of new of a new school and a fresh start. She'll she's still haunted by nightmares of a mass murderer, and for gruesome animatronic puppets. And uh, yeah, I said that right. Anima, animatronic puppets. Um. Where are you? Animatronic puppets. Okay, Charlie thinks she, her ordeal is over, but when a series of bodies are discovered near her school, bearing wounds that are disturbingly familiar, she finds herself drawn back into the world of the, of her father's frightening creations. Some something twisted in is hunting Charlie, and this time, if if it finds her, it's not gonna let go. A Lie Someone Told You About Yourself by Peter Ho Davies. A Lie Someone Told You About Yourself traces the complex consequences of one of the mo most personal yet public, intimate yet political decisions a family can make to have a child and conversely to choose not to have a child. A first pregnancy is interrupted by test results at once catastrophic and uncertain. A second pregnancy ends in a fraught birth, a beloved child, the purgatory of further tests, and questions that reverberate down the years. On the top here, by Sig Sigrid Nunes, the world needs more stories like this one, more of this kind of courage, more of this kind of love. <gasps> oh, yes! The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hub. Hab, rather. Oh, One of the booktubers on YouTube mentioned the, the series by Robin Hub. And I I I might be alone in this, but or I might be um, joining an infant gallery of b different bo people that love reading books, but honestly, it's no different than a series on on TV, or if it's a series online that you're streaming, or if it's a movie, whatever it might be. Who wants to read like the third or fourth book in a series if you haven't even read the first one or watched the first one? Am I alone in this? I don't think so. So, yeah, the Assassin's Apprentice. Oh, yes. I I watched this on Amazon Prime streaming. If you haven't seen this, and if you have Prime, 
Amazon Prime, that is? Watch this movie. Watch it. It has Tom Cruise in it. Tom Cruise, I mean, I think it's 2053 or 2045 when the, the plot is. I didn't think I'd like it until I, I watched the the trailer on it and yeah i need to watch the trailer like just just like the synopsis on the back and everything of the book i need to watch the trailer so anyway he, he i think he's a lieutenant corporal or or something you know up, up the chain of of crimes that will be committed in the future but he goes back into the past and basically reads the miranda writes to the, the people that are perp perpetrating these these crimes well if they never did it if they never perpetrate if they never did the crime would they, why would they get caught well the intent is still there apparently not because the minority report goes back into the past there's time travel involved in it they go they go back into the past right and then they do the memoranda right to the people that are have made this future crime back in the past it's heavy but anyway i got the book and i definitely want to read it so i mean the book book only has how many pages 380 pages not bad not bad not bad at all yeah other ones available total recall huh i wonder if it's the same as that movie with um arnold schwarzenegger in it yeah, total recall you remember the movie don't you um uh, paycheck i'm not sure what that is these are all classic stories the eye of the eye of the sibyl we can remember it for you wholesale Phys the physical book whether it's paperback or hardcover there's something about the physical feeling of a book versus um reading it you reading it like on a kindle or something there's something about that granted yes on a kindle or something it takes up less t le less space. Has hell of a lot cheaper. Point is, is that you know if you have a problem with with price tags, which I even have a problem with price tags. It's like you know what. Do yourself a favor. Get it from your library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have a subscription to your library, get one. It's free. Oh, <gasps> what did I say? Ding 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 ding. Free. Yeah. So anyway. Um, the Widow Queen. I want to read this too. Yeah. In this epic saga, ooh, Charles Todd, a hanging at dawn, a hanging at dawn. Uh, now, if you don't want me to read this, go, select, go to the next one. Okay. And I'll put, I'll, ooh, and then I will put, um, what you call it, timestamps in here too. Okay. So that you don't get bugged down by being bored. And it's like shut the hell up. Get to the next book. Okay. I put timestamps in here so that you can just. Fast forward, almost like a DVD, or if you're if you're old like me, v, a VCR tape. Okay, press fast forward if you don't want to hear it. So, um, years before the Great War summoned Bess Crawford to serve as a battlefield nurse, the abominable heroine spent her childhood in India under the watchful eye of her friend and confidant. The young soldier, Simon Brandon, the two formed uh, an inseparable bond on the, on the dangerous northwest frontier where father's regiment held the keeper pass against all intruders. It was Simon who taught best to ride and shoot, escorted her to the, baz the bazaars and the Marani's place. I did not, and did his best to keep her out of trouble. After the Crawford family took an interest in the in the tall, angry boy with the mysterious past, but the Crawfords had have a long guarded secret secrets for Simon, and the, he owes them a debt that runs deeper than Bess could ever know. Told through the eyes of Melinda, Richard, Clarissa, and Bess. A hanging at dawn pieces together a mystery at the center of Bess's family that will, that will irrevocably change the course of her future. It almost sounds like it's the last book I read by Jennifer McMahon, which was The Winter People. I give that, that book five stars 
because the very end of the book itself there's no spoilers here but the very end of the book really surprised me it it tore, it tore out my heart and just held it it did it really did because it's like oh my god this is so cute so sweet i i almost i almost started to tear up a little but it's like you know what yeah i gave it a five i gave it a five and if you want to see my, what my full review is i'll i'll put a clip up here um or suggested view up here so that you can check it out sound good all right anyhow on on to jennifer mcmahon which she actually wrote the drowning kind and again if you don't want to hear it skip to the next one from the new okay yeah 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 yeah. Right. like i told you before the winter people comes a chilly new novel about a woman who returns to an old family to the old family home after her sister mysteriously drowns in its swimming pool but she's not she's not the pool's only victim do you want me to continue how many cheap pages does this have 319 yep 319 pages i don't even go by chapters anymore screw that why because chapters only convey so much I mean, seriously, chapters only convey so much. A chapter could be a page. It doesn't matter. So I go by pages. I don't go by chapters anymore. I learned that one the hard way. Oh, especially with, when you're looking at a Stephen King novel and it's like over 1,100 pages versus like three parts or four parts to it. And there's like how many chapters within each part. Yeah, you kind of stick with ch pages versus chapter count. Otherwise, if you don't want me to read it, skip to the next chapter. Uh, when a social worker jacks, i be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I like that. When a social worker jacks receives nine missed calls from her older sister, Lexi. Oh, I like that name already. I used to work with a girl named Lexi. She assumes it's just another one of her sister's episodes. Manic and increasingly out of touch with reality. Lexi has pushed Jax away for over a year, so that the next day Lexi is dead, drawn in the pool at her grandmother's house estate. When Jax arrives at the house to, to go through her, her sisters, excuse me, she learns that Lexi was researching the history of, of their family and the property. She dives deeper into, into the research herself and discovers that the land holds a far darker past than she could have ever imagined. In 1929, 37-year-old newlywed, I was going to say, I I imagined 37, but I, I actually, I, I when I read 37, I imagined 73, so I was like, okay, wow, you're kind of old to be a newlywed, but I'm sorry, I'm being ageist, aren't I? Okay. Ethel Monroe hopes desperately for a baby in an effort to distract her. Ethel's husband whisked her away on a trip to Vermont where a natural spring is showcased by the newest and most modern hotel in the Northeast. Once there, Ethel learns that the water is rumored to, to grant wishes, never expecting that the spring takes in equal measure to what it gives. A haunting, twisty, and compulsively readable thrill ride from the author dubbed by Chris Bohalian. As a literary descendant of Shirley Jackson, The Drowning Kind is a modern day ghost story that illuminates how the past through sometimes, excuse me, though sometimes forgotten is never really a part, a far from behind us. Jennifer McMahon, two or words really have never been spoken. We. As my mother used to say, one of the things that my mother used to say is you really, I mean, you can never, you can never escape the past. You really can't. And that's the truth. It's going to start building up here a little bit, I imagine, because the, the book's are already leveled to the laptop. Yeah, I'm filming it on the laptop. <gasps> mm. Gabby Reads talked about this. I think Noelle Gallagher said something about this too. I'm trying to think who else. 
those are the two people that I can think of um, that talked about this. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not even going to read the synopsis of it or anything like that because I'm sure you guys already, you've heard enough about it. But I wanted to see if I, actually, I'm not going to read it. You remember, you remember last month when I was talking to you about the, the, the selection series and I got the fifth book in the selection series? Like, again, why would you want to read the fifth book if you haven't even read the first book? Common sense. So, uh, I just returned it to the library. Ooh, and then I get to see how much money I saved, too. Whew. Yeah, it's all right here on how much money I saved just by going to the library. Oh, my gosh. It's like, oh, my gosh. I mean, think of it. Um, if you do that every single month, right? Because I saved $178 already by 12 that's over two thousand dollars a year that you're saving at least because i get about 10 to 13 books every single month from the library that's that's my my thing i like doing that so be between 10 and 13 books a month that i usually get from the library right and i mean come on especially if you if you don't know if you're gonna like the book or not why not and not only that, but it actually helps you to see if you're going to like it. If you, if they're going to be, if that author is going to become your new best, you know, your new best friend. It's like, uh, like I told told you about Jennifer McMahon. No, it wasn't Jennifer McMahon. It was um, what's her name? The the lady I'm talk uh, I'm reading now, Sarah J. Moss. Yeah, Sarah J. Moss, and the one that I'm hoping is going to be idyllic is um. What was the other one? But anyhow, for the time being, Sarah J. Moss is my new best friend in author writing because she, mm, I'll be right back. So the next person is this person, Kara Cass. This is the first book in the selection series. And I, I hope she's just as good as Miss Moss is because her last name is my baby girl's first name, Cass. So too loud because she's right there and she'll think I'm talking about her so 35 girls one crown the competition of a lifetime so we'll see how many pages are you girlfriend 327 pages so the the saga continues his eyes cats I had never seen such eyes one was silver, the other one gold. They glowed in his sun-darkened face. Ooh, he sounded good-looking already. Uneven and strange. She was surprised that they hadn't shown in the darkness of their first meeting. They didn't see hum seem human. Then he raised his eyebrows a hair, and his mouth shifted into the hint of a smirk. He nodded at her, just barely, and it released her from a her from her spell cocky she thought cocky and arrogant this one and that was all she, there was to make of him whatever game he was playing if he expected her to join him he would be disappointed told you it's getting big hey that was it okay.